Good afternoon. Here's Birdhouse 3 of 5. Let me show you how I made it. Hello. Hey, this, uh, this birdhouse is going to be a little bit different. This is birdhouse number 3 of 5. I'm going to call this a slap birdhouse. What I'm going to do, this is a uh, this is a container for, you know, uh, CDs, DVDs. And what I've done is I went to the bandsaw and I cut me some strips of walnut and some strips of cedar out of a picket fence. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue these down here, here, and basically I'm going to alternate these all the way around like this. And uh, then I'll cut me a plug to go in the center. And then I will we'll pour resin in there. Uh, and then, you know, after it sets up, I'll turn it down and this will be the basic body. And then I'm going to have a tray around the bottom. It'll probably be walnut. And I'll have a roof on the top. And that'll probably be walnut. So this is going to be a very interesting uh, little project here. Get my hand out of the way. You can see a little better. But the first thing I'll do is after I glue them all in, well, then I'm going to pour this full of sealer and empty it and let it dry overnight to uh, you know to seal all these blocks to to basically keep from sucking the air out when I pour the resin. So that's where we're at. I get that done I'll uh, I'll come back. Hey, what I do is I just take and alternate these and uh, put me a glob of hot glue on the bottom of this one. Slap it in there like so. And put a little bit right here. That'll keep it from floating up. And, and I'll take a piece of cedar. Do the exact same thing on it. And a little bit of stuff in there. And that's the way I do it. I'm going to go all the way around like that. And uh, unless i got to go cut some more. And we'll see what happens. And one left over. That's pretty good guessing. So well, there you are. I'll let that set up real good. And I'm going to put some sealer in it. And uh, get it all saturated. And pour the sealer out. And let it dry overnight. Hey, you may question what I'm doing here. But this is the Saturday Low Sealer of Mint Wax. Right here. And... Uh, the theory is that I'm, I'm sealing this wood to keep the air from coming out whenever I pour resin in it. Uh, I've, I've done it before and it works. And when I, I, I cut the block, I'll do the same thing with the block. Well, I went out back and found a piece of white oak. Lamb laying down on the ground cut me off a, cut me off a chunk. Pretty much squared it out, up and I'm going just knock the edges down until I get it to fit for a plug and that'll be it. So let's do it to it. I'm going to use my beaver naturally. It's more or less trial and error here. I don't care if there's bark left on it. Might even get some of that uh, moss inside it. Well, actually, I think just dressing it up now, it'll be ready to go. So let's take the beaver and dress it up a little bit. And I believe it'll be ready to go. That couldn't have been better if I had tried. But I did try. Alright. Next step for today. And maybe for a little while because the Razorbacks are on the TV right this instant and I gotta get in there. So let me get this 
sealer on it and go wash some football. Alright, now to reiterate, the reason I put a sealer on it now is to uh, keep the bubbles from coming out of it whenever I pour epoxy. It, it just, I think it helps. Now, some people might disagree with me. They, they want to put it in um, cactus juice and all that stuff. But I don't. This sealer works. For what I'm doing, I think the sealer works just as well. Uh, cactus juice, you know, that stuff's expensive. Plus, what I have is probably so old it's no good anyway. <coughs> Plus, then you got to. Now you got to get out the vacuum pump and you got to put it in there and then you got to put it in the microwave. I'm telling you, part of my French was just a pain in the ass for the results you get. You notice I, I, I cut a little V right here and that's so that to pour my resin in. So okay, this is all ready to go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put a big old wad of hot glue right on the bottom of this sap sucker. And I'm going to stick it down. Right there. I'm going to center the best I can. Okay, uh, I'm ready to mix up some resin. I think I'm going to go with red. I'm going to use this easy cast with the yellow hardener to coat. If the yellow is on you, the colors don't matter other than the yellow. I found that the yellow affects the color. Because you remember that when I did the clock, I put uh, green dye in it and ended up being blue. So green and yellow makes blue. That's what happened. So anyway, uh, I don't know how much of this stuff it's going to take, but I'm going to just take a take a swag at it. I built a little lip around here for overflow. So I've got my two cups ready. So I'm just going to mix it up, and if I don't have enough, I'll uh, mix more. takes more than what you think, so I'm going to come by it right there. And the way, the way I generally do it is, you know, I let this settle down and that's, that's where it is, right there. So I'll pour my hardener in and then, and then I'll compare the two. And that's how I determine if I got a 50-50. Oops, I don't want to do that. Sorry about that. Almost screwed up, didn't I? So I'm going to come over here and pour some hardener in. Just about the same amount. Right about there. Now let that settle down. And looks like I need to pour just a little more harder to make it even. Ooh, that ought to be enough. Okay, there we are, on the money. At least I think we're on the money. Like I said before, I'm a firm believer in swag. For those of you who don't know what swag is, it's scientific wild ass gets. So I've only got one one glove to my name around here. Right in there. This stuff is, uh, like I told you before, the name of it is so strong. I got it off Amazon. Yeah, believe me, it is so strong. See there how quick that turned red? I mean, maybe the vice is in the way. Here are. See how quick that turned red right there? And that was just what was on here. Well, once I get it all poured up, I'll put it in a pressure pot and I'm going to move on to building the top. I, you'll see I've got uh, found a good piece of walnut and here we go. Hey, I found this piece of walnut buried underneath the table. I thought I'd use it to make the to make the top and the bottom. It's plenty thick. It's uh, anyway. Uh, it's on face plate as usual. I like face plates, so I'm going to use this rest. And I don't know if I told everybody or not, but it, first thing you need to do when you get a rest out is take some sandpaper and just do this to it, because you never know what's on it. Especially if you were using some sort of sealer or, you know, epoxy or something along that nature. 
And of course, I give you three guesses as to what I'm going to use to round this. And I'm not even going to say it anymore. Here we are. Uh oh. Back up a little bit. Here's the hair. There we go. Nice and tight. Everything set. I'm on the slow belt. Let me get my armor plate on. I would rather hair on the side here, as long as you're, uh, as long as you're careful. Pay attention to what you're doing. There's no danger of wearing gloves. People say that gloves cause accidents, but if you really look at it, it ain't the glove that causes it, it's you that caused it. Because you were doing something you shouldn't be doing. You weren't paying attention, you weren't concentrating. There's something here. If you've got a glove on, it's a good tight glove, and, and you keep your hands out of your work, you ain't going to have a problem. All right, let's whirl it up. Always sort of amazes me when you cut dry wood how, how hot it is when it hits you. Well, here's the uh, here's the next morning, and we'll take the. Uh, it's been about 18, 20 hours. We we'll take the pressure off of it. Just the part. Okay. Well, I'm going to put the uh, face plate back on this and, and get all this garbage off and put it on the lathe, and we'll see what we got. Well, I got the plastic container off of it, and I want you to look at this real close. I'm tempted not to even want to turn it. I mean, there is not a single bubble that I have found, and it is as smooth as glass. I'll probably not be able to get it that smooth again. My goodness. So, I guess the way I'm doing it must work. I mean, there is... You can look as deep as you want in there, you will not see a bubble. There's trash in it right there. My goodness. So pretty soon I'm going to, uh, I think, it felt a little pliable still, so I think I'm going to leave it sit for a while. I may not even turn it today. Man, it looks like I lost the audio on this one, but I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to run this thing about 2,000 RPM and I'm going to use a square cutter with a radius and just see what happens. I think it's probably going to work fine. So let's just uh, just watch it for a minute. You can imagine you're listening to some music because you won't be.
for some of you who haven't seen me do one of these resin bowls with a plug before, <clears throat> I like to do it this way. This is on a face plate, so I'd round the outside or do whatever you design I want. And then what I'll do is I'll drill this down to depth, all, about all the way down to there, about three and a half inches. Then I'll hollow it out, and this is the base. And it's already set up for a face plate, and I will epoxy this on here. And when it uh, sets up, I'll flip it around, put the face plate on this end, and uh, then I'll hollow from the other end until they meet each other. And then here's the top already prepared. And it will be epoxied on the top. And I'll drill my bird hole entrance and stuff like that. Uh, as far as these holes in here are concerned, I'll, I'll just sand this down on the on the sander. And uh, you know, I'll fill them with sand, sawdust, and then I'll I'll disguise them with a wood burner or something. Make little flowers or something. Anyway, that's the way I do it. So the next thing I'm going to do is to uh, go ahead and drill this out. I'm not going to use my straight three-step approach approach this time. I'm not sure. That just sort of depends on the wood. This is uh, this is uh, the plug's made out of white oak. So we'll see how it works here. Let me get this thing rolling. go ahead and change the rest out because I <clears throat> did you hear that little vibration that was telling me that I was just a little too far from the rest to the cutting surface done turning for the day I'm just going to go ahead and uh, mix up a little epoxy and, and put that on and it'll be uh, I'll probably be done for several hours but you know my philosophy is not to finish the outside to the inside it's done and here's a good demonstration of it uh, this isn't totally finished but I, you know I put a little bit of work in it but I flipped it I flipped it around and uh, put it back on here and it's uh, you can see it's, it's got a wobble now and when I went to cut this walnut off, a big chunk chipped out, so I ended up having to make the bottom a lot smaller. So uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to change the tool wrist first. I need a longer one. And make sure the top of this is clean. And I'm going to come in here and get this straightened out, right, with my beaver, and do it, and see if I can't, you know, just do a drag cut. Mm. Excuse me. No one. Go. All right. Looks about right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going I'm to come in here to right about here, see if I can't uh, do a drag cut on it. Straighten it up, sand it again. That's why you don't finish the outside until you get more of the inside done. But luckily, I hadn't totally finished it. Now, this time it chipped out a little bit, and I don't know why. So I'm, I'm going to come here with a uh, shear cut now. So now I'm going to come in here with a shear cut. Now I've explained this before on how to do this. And this. 
this is what I use. You want to come in here at a, at a 45, very lightly, nice and slow, and you'll get a real clean cut. And you have to spin it pretty fast. <clears throat> I'll be spinning this at about 2,000. Actually, I'm at 23. You want to come in here at this angle? Nice and slow. And you want to watch this top. You don't want that top to take the cancer vision in. Move your body. Bring this in a little closer. Now maybe you can see it a little better there. <clears throat> I'm gonna do another shear cut. Here. Come in here, turn it at a 45, keep it straight, keep it just a belly. by with that sanded, but I think I'm going to go a little deeper because I really do want to get uh, below them chip outs. I don't know why it did that. It wasn't doing it before. Could be because the epoxy is, is now getting older and it gets a little brittle when it does that, but I'm going to bring this down a little deeper right here. I'm going to do the same technique, but I you know, may have to do it a couple of times to get where I want to go. place right there. I think I'm going to clean this up right here with a round cutter. I'm going to come in here. Same, same principle here. I'm going to come in here like this and just touch it right here because I, I when I, I cleaned this up, I, I dipped it right there. I was going to make it sort of like a little a bead thing there, but I've changed my mind. so. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit. That pretty much got that. So what I'm going to do now is uh, maybe with just a little bit of sandpaper. Clean that up right there, a little 320, get it. Put my sucker thing over here. Okay, I'm uh, I put it in this chuck here. I just couldn't get it from wobbling the other way. It might wobble here, I don't know. And it does. Oh man, that's just amazing.
pretty good in there. A little rough in a couple places, but nobody going to see inside of that but the birds, my friend. Nobody but the birds. And this will basically go like so. There we go. Alright. I'm going to go mix some up and bring it back and then we'll put it on and give it a couple, three hours. And drill a couple holes, put a finish on it and we'll have birdhouse number three. pressure on it. Okay. I'll be back in a little while. Okay, there is your end product. I just <clears throat> hung it up on a couple strings here. Uh, I put two holes in there for whoever ends with up with it can hang it that way or they could you know run through here with a long screw or against something I don't know. Anyway there it is my friends. You can see, I think it turned out pretty nice. I haven't put my signature in the bottom yet, but I will. So, there you are. Birdhouse 3 of 5. I, sort of, I think I sort of like this one best of the three so far. It, uh, it was a pretty good little challenge. That's what this is all about. So here we go again. I have two more to go. I've got an idea on the next one. I'll start it in a day or two. And if this one, I don't have any idea. My wife wants me to make another one like this one, but a little bigger for her sister-in-law. So I don't know. That may be number five. So hope you enjoyed my video and maybe you learned a little something. You know, subscribe, tell your friends. You know the story. So the main thing is, let's keep them whirling.